Hi guys, it's Claris, and we are closer to Christmas now more than ever. Okay, so this is um, a tutorial that we're going to do today on um, those little snow globes. So I hope you're excited and uh, ready to do this with me. I'm hoping it won't take us too, too long. Um, let me tell you really quickly what I'm using. I'm going to be having these brushes handy. It is the Silver Black Velvet 4, the Princeton number 8, and the Da Vinci number 1 mop brush. And uh, we're gonna do the we're gonna do the um, the globe in the azure. So I have that on the side. And you can either continue using the azure for the bottom of it as well, or you could use like a brown. And I believe, uh, I think I'll, I'll try the brown just to sort of give it a different look. Uh, this is uh, raw sienna, I believe. All right, so let's begin. I am going to do, um, I'm going to do a rough circle just because I don't trust uh, myself to kind of freehand the circle. So I'm trying to see if there's anything circular around here that I can use to do a quick I got something. I was actually gonna paint the circle on, but then I figured that's not gonna work. Okay, so I'm using this. It's just my Kate Spade pen holder. And I'm just gonna roughly draw in the circle. And there we go, we have that. Uh, and for the base, just because I always mess this up I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna, I was gonna use something to, and I'm just taking some of the azure and I'm gonna mix it onto my little palette on the side. And then I'm going to just dip the tip in water and I want a very light consistency. So I'm just gonna show you, I just mixed it very lightly on here, okay? So now I'm just going to go ahead and add, go across this area and kind of spread the water. And then dipping the tip in water again, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Across on this side. And then the bottom can just be just kind of swishing it around. And now what I'm gonna do is just taking the brush, taking off most of the color from it, I'm just kind of adding a couple of swooshes in it. And I'm just mixing or moving some of the color that we have laid on here to kind of go in this kind of circular fashion around. And this will just kind of give it that idea that it is a reflection or just the glint of the glass. And make sure that you don't have any coming out to the side, then it looks weird. Like, look at this, this is outside. I'm gonna use my paper towel and wipe that off. There we go. And now that we have that, I'm going to take the number eight and just get more of the azure and just add it to the bottom here. And I just want that darker flare. And then very lightly, we're going to go around the edges too. And right now, because we're adding it to the bottom, what's happening is that it's giving us a nice blend. Um, so that's why it's imperative that you do it right now. So it can kind of give you that nice hue, so to speak. And now I'm just going very lightly across in a very thin, thin line. Then dipping the tip in water because I want it to get lighter. I don't want it to look like one, like, a, like an outline, but I want it to be fainter as we go up. And 
and you don't have to kind of seal it you can just kind of leave it that way all right so we have that some of this color has seeped out because we did kind of do a little bit of a boo-boo in the beginning so you can just take your paper towel and take it off not a big deal next we're going to do um the bottom and so i'm picking a brown feel free to pick any other color you wish, uh, like you can continue using the Azure if you wish. I'm gonna add the the water first. So let's use, let's continue using the mop brush to kind of put the water down. And I'm gonna leave a bit of white space between the globe and the bottom. And let's try and leave white space as we're painting this as well. And you can see some blues happening here. It's because I haven't fully washed off the brush and that's okay because it's fine if they kind of intermingle. And I'm just mixing some brown to the side now. And now I'm gonna go in with this brush and just add a swoop of brown. There we go, it's giving me that nice blend which is what I love to see. Um, I'm gonna highlight the edges so that they get nice and dark and then just kind of swoosh it along. And then I'm gonna go to the bottom here and add that line or paint this in. And again, like I'm saying, um, you don't have to paint all of it inside. You can just have like a nice amount of white space in linear format to kind of highlight a glint of light and shadow. It's just nicer. And then I'm just adding strokes so it gives us that nice circular motion. So just getting some color and just pressing down the brush and then just swooshing. And then just adding darker hues to the side. And a little at the bottom base. And we're good. So we have done this part. Now we can do the inside of our globe. The inside of our globe, I was thinking what to do and I uh, resorted to, let's do something we've already done previously. We're going to do a tree on the inside. So I'm going to use my two, the umber and the uh, green and we'll do a bit of the azure as well. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we have this, um, this area damp. So in the form of a tree, I'm just kind of going to go ahead and add some dampness to this area using just water on my brush, okay? And as soon as we have that, we can kind of go in and add a stroke off. Let's see which color. Let's do the do the um, umber and I have some of the some green mixed in there with it so I'm going to do the same technique that I did to apply the water so I'm just kind of going in with some of the umber and I'm adding some strokes to show the tree and if you've done any of my tree tutorials and I think I have like about three of them out there. Um, this is a very similar fashion to what we've done previously. So dampening the background, then kind of going in with one color. And then once this is semi dry, we're going to go in with the next color. So I'm just kind of adding strokes or points so this is the pointillism 
which we kind of did previously as well. And now what I'm going to do for the bottom is, because it's it's got that blue as well, I'm just dipping the tip of this brush without really washing it away in the blue, and I'm kind of doing the same motion that we have for the blue at the bottom. Now if you feel like there's too much water, just kind of take your paper towel and damp do some dabs to kind of take it off. Uh, I'm going to do that just as soon as I finish adding a couple of these strokes in here or points in here. There we go. All right, so I have that. Now I'm going to take my paper towel and just kind of dab the excess water. And that's it. I'm going to go back in, add a couple more dabs. Not too many. All right. And now that we have this, I'm going to do some splatter on here. Okay. So should have probably done it earlier, but I'm going to use the, um, the mop brush and just splatter some water onto this. And this gives us those nice wet granulated is it granulated yeah kind of look happening in there so I wanted that that's why I did this all right so now we're gonna do our next layer for the tree all right so now for this layer I'm gonna use my green and I'm mixing some of my green using the number four and I'm just gonna have it on to the side on my palette just so I can Take the color directly from there. And now we're going to start from the top. So, adding from the top, adding the little strokes, and kind of going in that direction just like we did previously. If you feel like there's too much water pooling, guys. Just take your paper towel and dab. Okay, that was a bit too much water on mine. Uh, so I'm gonna start again. And this is better. And we're gonna kind of go along and create these nice branches for our tree and if you want to kind of go ahead and mix some of the umber or the brown in there to kind of give it a different hue feel free to do that in fact you know what what I'm going to do is taking some of the umber I'm going to kind of sporadically add it in different areas and then I'll go back in with the green and then when it'll give me a nice blending kind of look, which is what I want. So getting more of that umber, I'm gonna kind of have it float all over. The whole idea of this um, exercise is we're relying on the fact that the water is damp enough and it is going to kind of blend in, giving us a nice, loose looking Christmas tree. All right, so see that effect? That's stunning, I love it. I'm gonna go in with some of my green and I'm adding it in the other areas in between the umber that we just laid down. And the consistency is more color, less water, because we already have a damp enough section application of water. And so kind of just going along and adding our strokes. And then, um, you can actually kind of go in with another layer and add more later. But I think this is good. This is really good. Um, so we'll wait for this to dry. 
And then my next suggestion would be we can either kind of go in with some white or we can actually do some nice Christmas looking baubles on here and just kind of allow it to kind of spread around a bit. And actually right now you can even do some more of the splatter. Now it's actually perfect on the tree because again, it looks like snow almost. It's pretty. You can see it, right? All right, so we're gonna let this dry for a bit. All right, so it's dried up, but I think we could do, I, I think we could do one more layer uh, and we'll just use the green this time and using a very saturated amount, we'll just go in and add certain areas, just highlighting certain areas with the green. And just to give it that nice dark and light detail happening. You've got some white areas, perfect. Leave those in. Just kind of have these going in waves almost. So you have a cute little nice full looking tree. And yeah, just kind of see where you want the additional dark use to kind of go and add them add them in I'm kind of just going in places here and there to kind of just give it a fairly nice dimensional look and feel to it I guess and when I say dimensional, I do I don't mean like it's popping off the page like a 3D object, but it just adds it doesn't make it look flat. Uh, and it's amazing how different textures, colors and shapes can kind of produce that effect um, in a painting. So without it looking too detailed, right? So there we go. See how that kind of just makes it pop. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is add some, um, some holiday cheer to this. So you can choose to add some Christmas baubles or holiday baubles, or you can just go right into the snow and just have some snow on there. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add some color in there just because I would like to see that. So I'm going to add a combination of an orangey red and I think red or blue would be the most obvious choices at this point but I think let's just go with the orangey red. I'm just going to go with this. You guys can feel free to like add another color. Actually, you know what? I'm going to add this orangey red and add a little bit of the Carmen. To get like this pinky red. And then I'm gonna add some gouache. Some white gouache into it to get this pink. I have a pink, guys. And let's see how this looks. All 
All right, wish me luck. Here goes nothing. All right, so I'm just going to add these cute little pink bubbles around here and there. Just make sure that you don't have it running in an area where it's damp because you can see it's running through the green. So I'm just going to take a paper towel and take that off. The pink is all right. It's a little too Barbie dollish for me. But you guys get the idea. Go ahead and get a color that you like and kind of add that in. If you want to add some color to your tree, obviously. If, if not, then you can totally leave it as is. I'm just making sure it doesn't run away too much. And then the next step after this will be fun. Actually, um, just another tip. How you could also do these is if you used white first and then went in with color. Uh, and then that would give you a nice effect as well. Because then you would have the white glint in these as opposed to a green background. Because as you can see, I'm adding them in, but I'm leaving like a little bit of a open space in between to kind of give it that uh, loose painting look. Or just go in the areas where you have white space and like do a little circle around there. But our next step could also redeem the whole white area factor. I kind of like this. This pink is actually looking very much like a Barbie doll kind of Christmas tree. Any Barbie doll fans out here? I used to have a few. All right, just going to do a few more and then we're good. It's just meant to be like a cute, fun tutorial that we do before the holidays or for the holidays. So if you're still making cards, this would be a great idea to consider doing. All right, okay, not going to do any more. And we have our cute little Christmas tree. And now we can go in with um, some white. You can either use the gouache or you can use a Sharpie if you have one. So I think I'm gonna use the Sharpie and I'm gonna add some white snow flakes in here. All right, so I moved stuff out of the way and we're gonna get ready to add some white snowflakes on here so obviously because this is one of those crystal ball uh, ideas the there should be snow at the bottom or the little white flakes at the bottom so I'm gonna add that at the bottom first and it just in this manner in fact you know this could take a while so let me make this a time lapse. All right, so here we are. This is what we have. And uh, you can still see some of them are still kind of drying, but you can see of the ones that have dried up, I've kind of gone in and added like a nice white dot. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much the whole tutorial. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, have fun with this. You can actually even go in and add a ribbon and maybe add some mistletoe and make it a little more festive. 
And I think I'm going to do that, but you guys have the basic idea of how to do this, or this is at least my technique. So thanks so much guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. Send me your work on Instagram and Facebook and uh, talk to me. Tell me what you thought about this. I love engaging with you guys and seeing your work. So thanks so much for watching. We'll chat soon. Bye.